Hello, I'm Dawn Tan. It's 11 a.m. in Singapore and Shanghai, 8.30 a.m. in New Delhi and in the news now. Australia's Prime Minister Julia Gillard springs a surprise with a September election date, setting the stage for one of the longest campaigns in Australia's history. Like father, like son, Hillary Clinton says North Korea's sabre-rattling young leader is a chip off the old block, but she still hopes he can be convinced not to conduct a nuclear test. Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard has called for general elections in September. Final preparations are underway for South Korea's satellite launch this afternoon. Now, this will be Seoul's third try after two failures in four years. Now, meanwhile, North Korea has vowed more rocket launches and nuclear tests, targeting its sworn enemy, the U.S. America's top diplomat, Hillary Clinton, has expressed regret that North Korea's new leader, Kim Jong-un, is failing to take steps to end his country's isolation. Mrs. Clinton spoke during a town hall session, taking questions from broadcasters worldwide. It is one of her final interviews before leaving office. Mrs. Clinton believes the U.S. and other parties in six-way talks must work closer to change the North's behavior. She is disappointed that the Western-educated Kim Jong-un is turning out to be little different from his father and grandfather unsuccessfully in 2004 for the presidency. His nomination is part of President Barack Obama's second-term cabinet reshuffle. Mr. Kerry is likely to be sworn in as the top U.S. diplomat later this week. This guy, thank you very, very much. Moving on to some economics news out of South Korea. South Korean industrial output in December rose for a fourth consecutive month. Output grew by 1% in December from the previous to the relegation zone after a 1-2 defeat to Newcastle United. It's the Magpies' first win of the year and snaps a six-game winless streak. Wigan are out of the drop zone on goal difference. Reward for battling back from two goals down to hold Stoke City. In London, former Manchester United player David Beckham was seen training with Premiership side Arsenal. Now, he may be wearing their kit, but the Gunners have denied that they will be signing the former England captain. Beckham's future is still up in the air since leaving the LA Galaxy team last month. Now, he's been linked with French club Paris Saint-Germain and London club's Queen's Park Rangers and West Ham United. But one thing appears certain, and that is that Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger will not be signing the 37-year-old. He insists Beckham's just at the... Some news out of Southeast Asia now, and Myanmar is not planning to drop a number of popular Olympic sports from the SEA Games 2013 lineup, as previously reported. Now, this emerged from a meeting of the SEA Games Federation Council that wrapped up in the host nation. Some sports are indeed out, like gymnastics and tennis, but badminton, table tennis and hockey are in, as is men's water polo, but with strings attached. On one condition. He is the first U.S. soldier to survive losing all four limbs in the Iraq war four years ago. Now Sergeant Brendan Morocco has been given a new lease of life with a double arm transplant. Now, the 26-year-old was discharged from the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore after the surgery six weeks ago. A team of 16 doctors volunteered to attach a pair of arms from a donor in a 13-hour operation. It's the first such procedure in the hospital and only the seventh in the U.S. Sergeant Morocco already had prosthetic legs fitted, but he says not having arms really bothered him. I hated not having arms. I was all right with not having legs. Uh, not having arms takes so much away from you out of even your personality. Mr. Morocco is now looking forward to swimming, driving, and maybe even a marathon using a hand cycle. But doctors say it'll be years before his nerves regenerate and he regains full use of his arms. Over the next two years, he'll have to spend up to six hours a day in physical therapy. New lease on life indeed. Well, that's the news for now. Always live on channelnewsasia.com. And you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. Headlines are next. Stay tuned.
Time for a check on the headlines this hour. Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard has called for general elections on September 14th. Now, the surprise announcement sets Australia up for an eight-month-long campaign season that will be one of its longest ever. Ms Gillard says announcing an election date early will give businesses more certainty. She defeated Tony Abbott of the Liberal Party in a razor-thin contest in 2010. Polls suggest the Labour government would be swept from office if elections were held now. Final preparations are underway for South Korea's satellite launch this afternoon. The 140-ton rocket will blast off from Naro Space Center just before 3 p.m. Singapore, Hong Kong time. Now, this will be Seoul's third try after two failures in four years. Seoul is under pressure to pull it off, particularly after North Korea's successful satellite launch just last month. Envoy Lakda Brahimi says the Syria war has reached unprecedented levels of horror and the country is breaking up before everyone's eyes. Speaking to the UN Security Council, Mr. Brahimi said he had no progress to report on the 22-month-old civil war. Now he's urged the 15-nation council to overcome its deadlock. The Security Council hasn't taken action on Syria because Russia and China refuse to consider sanctions against Damascus. Those are the headlines you're watching Channel News Asia. Time for a Singapore update. Prime Minister Lee Sien Lung says Singapore's population challenges are difficult and complex. He says the goal of the White Paper on Population is to ensure Singapore continues thriving for the sake of the younger generation. And it's not just the headline number which matters, but getting the right mix of citizens a right turn. More on ChannelNewsAsia.com.